So we keep going with the bodywork on the GT6. Why are you standing like that? Did you drink too much last night? Okay, I'll stand like that so we can see each other straight. Huh. Something like that. Am I straight now? Yeah, okay. So, good morning. Uh, so we are back on the GT6 today and we will work on the bodywork. We will keep working on the bodywork for the next, I don't know, weeks, months, whatever it takes. So, uh, I guess, like I said many times already, it's going to be boring for you. So I'm going to be showing you a little bit uh, of uh, before and after, I guess. So. My idea now is uh, to work on the part of the car which is accessible as I'm standing or a little bit bending over or maybe sitting on something but once I get to the areas where I have to kneel down or lay on the floor I'm not going to do that I'm going to take the body, I'm going to put it on a cart and it's going to be higher enough so I can work standing or sitting I mean, because my back started to hurt already with so many projects, you know, I'm working on the TR6 outside and that's painful for my back, you know. I'm going to try to work as smart as possible so we can be healthful, healthful, healthy, so we can be, <laughs> just made up my own word, huh? so we can be healthy for many more projects, hopefully. Yeah, so let's start then today, like I said. You know we've done the roof already, I mean, we've done it up to 80 grit sandpaper and I think we're gonna do the rest here, this area, with 80 and actually the whole car because since I will be epoxy priming it again there's no point to go in with 220, right? At least that's what I think, but let me know in the comments, maybe I need to, I don't know so my plan so far is to do the whole car with 80 grit do all the bodywork everywhere where there are little uh, imperfections we're gonna make them perfect and then we're gonna spray one more coat of epoxy primer then we're gonna sand that with 80 then with 220 then we're gonna spray with uh, high build primer we're gonna sand that to 600 uh, wet sand and then we're gonna go to color well I keep repeating my plan, but I just want you to know what my plan is so you can correct me if I make any mistakes because, you know, this is the first time I'm doing that, so I don't want to be doing stupid things, you know, how you correct me many times, and I thank you for that, like this strengthener piece for the, GT, for the TR6, <laughs> well, it's done already, it's there, so I think it is a good idea, but that's another story. So, let's start here. From what you guys are telling me and uh, from what I watched and heard and uh, learned so far about bodywork, there are two schools. One school is uh, the old school where they prefer to do the bodywork on bare metal and then uh, epoxy prime on top. And the new school is where they uh, prefer to spray epoxy primer first and then do the bodywork over the epoxy. And so far from what I see it for me, it is uh, much easier to work over uh, epoxy primer because I can use it as a map. When I sand with my block, I can see the high spots right away and the low spots and everything and it's much easier for me to work. But I use it as a guide code, so that's why um, I think even in future if I keep doing that, I will be doing it this way. First the epoxy primer and then the body work. All right. Here. <coughs> so this whole area around the hatch is sanded with 80 grit and I don't see any problems anywhere so that is good I'm not gonna touch it anymore but now I started sanding this area here and what I notice right away is that this lip is higher than this and 
And to be honest, I'm not going to be worried about that. I'm going to worry if I have waves this way. But since I have a little bit of a low area here, like a curve, I'm not worried about that because it might be even part of the design of the car, as long as it's not waving this way. So what I'm going to do now, instead of sanding it only with a flat block, I'm going to sand it like that a little bit, so I can sand this way, and this is going to help me see if I have waved this way. And uh, yeah, here too you see, the low area follows this curve. So I think it's even part of the design of the car, or this is how the metal reacted when they bent this. I don't know what happened, but, but I'm not worried about this. Anyways, let me sand it, and we'll, when we see a little bit more of the map, we'll decide how to proceed. Uh, huh. Yeah, here I can definitely see it. Up to here it goes like that, all the way here it goes like that, but here it starts going the other way around. It almost looks like this edge here, which is <laughs> like that, needs to go down, needs to be bent a little bit more. So I'm gonna try, you know what I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try to hammer a little bit this area here. Yeah. Let's see what damage I can do here. Do you see? Looks like maybe that's the nature the nature of shape of the car, but it's not like that over there. Anyways, I'm gonna try to do it only here on the edge, and that's if this bends a little bit down, this will bring this end this here down. I don't think I'm doing anything. Yeah, I'm just creating more damage. Yeah, I can definitely feel this here. From here to here, it is like that. And I can see maybe there's a seam here. Yeah. Looks like this piece and this, this piece and this piece are one. But there is a seam here. Okay, I'm gonna keep sanding here to bare metal so I can uh, try and shrink this because I, I can see here something forming. Obviously with, obviously, with hammering, it's not gonna work, but we'll try the shrinking disc, and if that doesn't work, I'm not gonna bother too much with that. coming from didn't I sand the whole body to bare metal red paint how come I'm amazed okay we will try this the shrinking disc here okay let's see what's gonna happen have this wet rug even though oh my god that sunk a lot <laughs> even though the idea of water and bare metal is making me cringe 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 whatever oh my god that sunk too much but okay that's fine let's do this let's do a little bit there Wow, I think now we moved the high area here. Let's see, let's sand it now. Again, the shrinking disc belongs to Eugene. I have so many tools of his here. 
No, the Siberian is here, I think. So, now I need here and here, these two areas. Now it's almost flat, so it's a little bit low now. Wow, that works fantastic. I remember when I was doing the roof, it was really hard to work there, but there I had a lot of welding, and the MIG welding is not really easy to form. After that, after it's welded, actually, it's almost impossible. Uh, TIG welding is uh, something that you can bang and bend and form like a normal sheet metal after the welding is there. The MIG welding, just too hard. So that's why I was having troubles on the leading edge of the roof. But here, because it's flat, uh, it's just sheet metal, it works fantastic. Yeah. Now it moves here and here. Well, I can keep chasing it down, and I think that's what I'm gonna do. Because every time I shrink it here, it, uh, the, the high spot remains here. So I'm gonna keep chasing it down until it reaches the end, but basically we're chasing this low area down until it becomes a high area at the corner. Hopefully that's gonna work, let's see. Following your advices to apply more than what I need, uh, I applied a thick layer of fiberglass there, which I'll have to sand down in a little while. And now, while it's hardening, we're gonna work on this end here, at the, and it is pretty much the same thing. It is actually exactly the same thing. You see the high areas here, and the corner is low all the way to here. So. We're going to try to bring these high areas as close as possible to the corner and then we're going to build the corner up a little bit. At least now I feel more confident that it works because I did it there. But I'm not going to hold you, I'm going to bring you back when it's done. Alright, this and this went low. Now here again we have the seam and this needs to go down a little bit. But you know what, I think I want to try something else here. Let me show you what else Eugene gave me. He gave me this pneumatic hammer. So it has all these different attachments that have different crowns at the front. I think this is the flat one. This has a little bit of a crown. Then this one has a little bit higher crown. A higher crown. This is a metal one, I think. These are all plastic. This is a metal one with a bigger crown and an aluminum one. But now I think I can use a flat one. The only thing is now, this is like very strong. It doesn't have any button or anything. You just push it against the metal and it hammers. But that's way too strong for what I want. Oh my god. <laughs> So, what I decided to do, I added a regulator, and that's again from Eugene. <laughs> so now I can adjust the pressure of the air, and now it is much. You see, that's much gentle. Of course, I can't keep the regulator here, I'm gonna add it at the other end of the line, I just want it for demonstration purposes here. So I'm gonna try this now, uh, there to hammer the seam on the car down. Let's see how is this gonna work here, in this area. Maybe a little bit stronger. Yeah. <laughs> Works great, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> That's perfect. Now, of course I can put a dolly underneath. But I think that's perfect now. You see the high, the high spot moved right here, close to the edge. Can't move it all the way to the edge, but it's as close as possible to the edge. Okay, I have to put, uh, sorry about the air, I have to put uh, Teflon tape here, I didn't put anything. So, again, we're gonna fill this up with fiberglass, and here we're gonna raise the corner a little bit, and we're gonna jump back on the other one. Wow, I'm amazed. I'm amazed, Eugene. <laughs> That's great. We applied fiberglass there, so now we are back on this corner to sand it with 40 and see what we've done. Alright, that's not bad. It's nicely feathered at the edges, which means that we have a smooth transfer from the other area. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to apply body filler only to, to cover these low spots here. And hopefully after the next sanding it's going to be uh, ready, this corner. I keep this on purpose, this sharp. At the end we're going to smoothen it, but now it is giving me um, idea about the, the height of the lid and I decided that you know here it uh, it comes a little bit higher the lip somewhere here but from here I'm gradually gonna go back to to flat because I can't make it the same as here I'm just not so so skilled so anyways I'm gonna put some bond of here and we're gonna go work on the other side again and a scheme of bondo is uh, applied. I try to make it as smooth as possible so I can go straight with 80 instead of uh, scratching it all with 40 and having to apply uh, bondo again to cover the scratches, you know. And now we're gonna jump over there. This is what this area looks like after the 40 and then 80 grit. So I'm gonna put some body filler again and we're gonna move back there. Done. Back on the other side now. Over there. Do you feel dizzy already from skipping back and forth? Well, now you know how I feel. I'm gonna call this completed. I like it. The edges for me are nicely feathered, so now it is uh, ready for another coat of epoxy primer because we straight to bare metal here. It feels nice and smooth, there are no waves. We can keep going forward now here, but before that we're gonna go over there. And this area is almost done. Unfortunately I'll have to add a little bit more filler here because this, you can see the lines, I can feel them. It is too low and when I run my block flat like this, it doesn't reach it. So I'm gonna have to add just here and that's gonna be it. But uh, for now I'm keeping the edge sharp and when I'm done with this area, I'm gonna smoothen this. I smoothened that one, I don't, I don't know if you noticed. But uh, yeah, that's gonna be the last for this area, and then we can keep going forward. Okay, we applied a little bit of bondo here, and now we're gonna go start going this way, where it hardens. Okay, so this entire area is sanded now with 80. And there are two issues that I found here. One is here, you can see, it looks like there's a cut here, and I welded it, and there's this, uh, which I'm pretty sure 
it wasn't even fixed from the factory, but I want to fix it. So that's a little bit a challenge now because it's uh, very hard to sand here, for me at least. And the other area is here. I don't know what happened here, but it is uneven. I can feel it with my finger. So I'm going to apply Bondo here and here. And the rest is pretty good. Here I still have to sand a little bit more. But uh, it is pretty nice and flat, so I'm going to apply Bondo there now, and I'm going to come back to this. Alright, this area is now completed, and I'm really happy with how it feels. It's nice and smooth, no waves, no bumps, no, no highs, no lows. Of course, we will see after we apply the epoxy primer again, and we sand it again, but for now, I think it's perfect. I smoothened this edge, not sharp anymore, so I can consider this area completed and move forward. And forward I mean this and this, and even this, I don't know if you see it, yeah. This here, if you remember, I applied Bondu here with my finger the other day, so now I'm gonna start working on these three areas and we'll see what damage we can do here. Alright, I'm happy how this turned out. I'm really happy, nice and smooth and it's feathered here, so I'm happy. This one even turned out very good, I'm happy with it as well. I don't feel an even part anymore. And uh, only this one is a little bit tricky, because here I can't use any blocks or anything, so I use my finger again for the sandpaper. But it's getting better and better, so I need to apply a little bit more Bondo here. But I didn't want to mix uh, Bondo only for here, that's why I sanded this area here. This is where I was throwing Bondo when I needed to get rid of it, when I was mixing too much and I needed to do something with it. So this is where I was throwing it all the time. And now I sanded it and it doesn't look uh, bad too. I need to apply some more in some areas, so that's why I sanded it down now so I can mix enough for here and for the little repair here. and smell it.
All right, I'm pretty happy with this area now. The only thing is here, in inside here, I didn't apply Bondo, and now it appears it's not very smooth, so I'm gonna throw some more Bondo here, and on the other side, let me show you, and over here as well, and a little bit here, because it's not very smooth. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna put some Bondo here, and I'm gonna take off for today because I got tired. Ugh. Yeah, I got tired. It's not easy to keep on rolling. <laughs> no, I'm just breathing through the mask all the time. Oh my god, I think it's lack of oxygen, but I'm, I have a headache even now. So, I'm gonna just apply a little bit of Bondo here and I'm gonna go home. And I'm gonna edit the video for you guys so you can see where I'm at. And have some more laugh with my stupidities. <laughs> okay. Oh, I think there's water here. You've seen those guys where they, with two sticks, and they walk around and they find where there's uh, water underground. At least in Bulgaria there are many of those. And they really guess. They just do that and there are two sticks going left and right. And when they when they come together or when they spread around, this means that there's water or something like that. Anyways, see you next time guys. Bye! Whoops.